Hey guys, CL Cannon here from Fiction Atlas Press bringing you another indie connection. Today I'm going to be telling you about some indie books that you might enjoy if you're a fan of the Enola Holmes series by Nancy Springer. The first book I have for you is called A Thread of Madness, the Dickinson Sisters Mysteries Book One by Blythe Baker. A sudden death uncovers a string of secrets in a small village. When seamstresses Iris and Lily Dickinson are accidental witnesses to a murder, the spinster sisters resolve to keep themselves and their pristine reputations a discreet distance away from the sword business. The unexpected discovery that the killer might be in their very midst soon changes everything, sparking an urgent desperation to ferret out his identity. While assisting the local constable in his investigation, Iris stumbles across a family mystery of her own, a buried secret that calls into question everything she thinks she knows about her sister. With Iris's once blind faith in Lily shaken, can the sisters unite long enough to escape the schemes of a dangerous lunatic? The next book I have for you is called Stalking Jack, Madeline Donovan Mysteries. Follow Madeline into the streets of Whitechapel as she hunts down the demon Jack. The SS City of New York is about to embark on its maiden voyage to London. This lavish liner will have its passengers filled with wonder at its opulence. Madeline Donovan has set sail for London to escape a painful occurrence in her life, but instead she is drawn into the intrigue of a mystery that will have all of London and the world talking. Newspaper accounts of the first victim, of the infamous Jack the Ripper, reach the ship. After that, it is on everyone's mind, especially a group of women, who will entreat her to find their niece, who they believe may be in Whitechapel. Jonathan Franks, a New York reporter, will become her constant companion, along with others that she will meet along the way. When she arrives in Whitechapel for the first time and sees the squalor and hopelessness that permeates the streets, she is determined to hunt down Jack. The third book I have for you is called Ducket and Dyer, Dicks for Hire by G. M. Nair. Michael Ducket is fed up with his life. His job is a drag, and his roommate and best friend of 15 years, Stephanie Dyer, is only making him more anxious with her lazy irresponsibility. Things continue to escalate when they face the threat of eminent eviction from their palladial fifth-floored walk-up and find that someone has been plastering ads all over the city for their detective agency. The only problem is, he and Stephanie don't have one of those. Despite their baffling levels of incompetence, Stephanie eagerly pursues this crazy scheme and drags Michael kicking and screaming into the fray only to find that they are way out of their depth. They stumble upon a web of missing people that are curiously linked to a sexually audacious theoretical physicist and his experiments with the fabric of space-time. And unless Michael and Stephanie can put their personal issues aside and fix the multiverse, the concept of existence itself may, ironically, no longer exist. And the last book I have for you is called Greythorn by L. M. Merrington. How did Lucy Greythorn die? From the moment Nell Featherstone arrives at Greythorn Manor as a governess to eight-year-old Sophie, she finds herself haunted by the fate of the mistress of the house and entranced by the child's father, the enigmatic Professor Nathan Greyhorn. When a violent storm reveals Lucy's body is not in her grave, Nell becomes suspicious about the professor's research. But what she discovers in his laboratory will turn all of her ideas about life and death, morality and creation on their head. Enthralled by a man walking a fine line between passion and madness, Nell must make an impossible choice between life, death, and life after death, where any mistake could be her last. Okay, that's all for me this week. I'll see you next week on the Indie Connection. Bye!